many circles, the word annuity is like a four letter word. You either love them or hate them. But you know what? A lot of people love them. In fact, in 2022, $312 billion of annuities were sold. 2023, $350 billion of annuities. My purpose here with this video is not to suggest that you buy one. I don't know your unique situation, the cash you have, the social security benefits, sources of income, assets. I don't know any of that stuff. What I want to show you is how I prepare a quote, what everything means, and then I'm going to take you to the flip chart and I'm going to show you how the accumulation bucket works, how the income bucket works, how long the income typically pays for, how the fees are handled, so that you could be a little more educated on what it means to use an annuity for income planning purposes. The first thing I want to do is share this BlackRock study with you. BlackRock is the largest asset manager I don't know if it's in the country or the world. They're a giant player. They do not sell annuities. They have this uh, study, how to optimize retirement income. And in this study, they say, if you do three things, you're going to have a better outcome. You're either going to have more money to spend early in retirement, or you're going to have more money left over. The three things are create guaranteed income, take Social Security a little bit later, and then to be a little more aggressive with your asset allocation. In return for those three things, what they say you'll have is more spending ability, more spending certainty because you're decreasing downside risk, and better help with longevity risk, which means that you'll have a smaller chance of running out of money, or at least your money will last as long as you do. So I'm going to put the link for this video in the description. So let's enter some information and look at some numbers. Jim and Jane Retiree. Jim is 61, Jane is 63, and we're going to use $300,000 here as the number. Let's continue and get a quote. Now, I'm going to have the benefits starting in five years to bump up, to take advantage of the guaranteed roll-up rates, the growth rates of the income base, so we can get a little more income. So the first thing we're going to look at here is we're going to look at, I only want an A-rated carrier. I don't want any B carriers. I don't care what the income numbers are. So I'm going to click yes there. So that's going to change things a little bit. Um, I also don't want reducing benefits. I want the benefit to increase, have the potential to increase. Um, I don't want any reducing benefits, anything that's based upon market. Uh, we are trying to lock in an income number at this point. So I'm going to click no there. And I don't care about the income growing in this case. Uh, sometimes I like income to grow, but when clients have healthy Social Security benefit numbers, then they uh, then I'm, I'm okay with that because Social Security will increase with inflation. So um, sometimes what I want is I want the client to have more money to spend when they're younger and healthier. Not sometimes, all the time. So in this case, what I'm going to look at here is, I don't know if Speeda, I don't, I don't know that company. Um, I try to, to get the highest A-rated carrier that has a name that people understand that they might know. So this one is American General, which is really AIG, which is a company that's been around forever. They're very competitive in this space. So what this is telling me, and I've done other videos on this, the deposit is $300,000, the premium on this. Um, you see a roll-up rate here. I don't care what the roll-up rate is. You can see the income amount. I don't care what this number is. You see the benefit rate or the distribution rate. I don't care what this number is. I only care what the income is. That's all I care about. Now, this one's a little bit higher up here, but I don't know this company. Maybe they're, they're, they're A minus. They're not A. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going there. And I think my clients would agree. So here is the, in, the number 29711. Now, one thing I want to point out is that the income number is generated based on the lower, the lower age of the two ages. So in this case, Jane is 63 and Jim is 61. So when we go to determine that benefit rate, it's going to be based on Jim being 61. So if you watch here, I'm going to change them both to 63. Here we go. Again, here's AIG. The first year here is 34,000. 200. Again, we don't care about any of these roll-up rates, income amounts, benefit rates. We don't care about any of that. We just care what the income is going to be. What I want is for my clients, I want you to know that this number, 34.2, that's the number. In this case, the benefit is higher because both people are age 63. So presumably there's less, less lifespan left uh, for either party. The key to this is that that is a joint benefit. So if God forbid Jim retiree passes away in five, six, 10 years, 15 years, and Jane retiree lives into her 90s, she's going to continue to get that 34200 every year. We understand here there's no increases for inflation or, or based on performance of any underlying indexes. We are saying, give us the highest possible number now. 
We know that the rest of our investments will grow. We know that Social Security will grow and those will be hedges for inflation. Uh, from the annuity, let's just get as much money as we can out of it. Hey everyone, it's Aaron Kennedy with a quick message. We've created a free training video to teach you how to increase your spending ability, reduce downside risk, and make sure your money lasts as long as you do. You can click the link in the description right where it says free training. And of course, if you like what we're doing, please like and subscribe. Okay, so let's take a look at the mechanics of this. There are two sides to every annuity. There's an accumulation value and an income value. The income value is much easier. Now remember, we're doing this to generate a stream of income. We're not doing it for any other reason. We want to create a stream of income and we want to optimize our income. In this case, you'll remember the numbers 29711. This number should look familiar. That number's going to pay out. Remember, we're deferring for five years. Let's refresh this. 61 and 63 are the ages. We're gonna defer for five years. And after the fifth year, this annuity is going to pay 29711 until the second person passes away. This is the first person they're, they're, they've passed away. Second to die, the joint benefit goes on. Now, it does not matter what the accumulated value is. Every year, these people are going to go and get a statement. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. Average life expectancy suggests that for 61 and 63, that there's probably a 25% chance or at least a 20% chance that somebody's going to live until their 90s. If they get to 65 and 67, then the increase is till about 25, 28%. There is longevity. This is what the data shows us. So in that case, if this accumulated value is empty, if the, if the money is gone, the insurance company is going to continue to pay until the second to die. That's the bet that they're making. Because we understand that for every 65 year old, if the life expectancy is 87 or 88, we know that some aren't going to live that long. Some are going to pass in their 70s. That's just how it works. So they're gonna to continue to pay this number. Now let's look at this side. What happens here? So during the deferral period, the five years, this number is going to increase by index credits. Like for example, that could be a fixed interest rate of two and a half percent or something along those lines or index credits where the there are investments that mirror what's happening in the market you can't lose any value there's a rider fee the rider fee in this case is 1.1 percent so this number is going to increase by the index credits it's going to decrease by the rider fee for five straight years so on the income side all of this stuff means nothing we know in the contract that this party is going to receive 29 7 11 after the fifth year until the second person passes away so what happens here? Eventually this bucket empties out. Again, because of life expectancy, it is probably a very good bet that this accumulated value is going to be spent in the form of income. Probably I would say for about 15 or 18 years is going to be money in this bucket. So what happens if Jim and Jane retiree pass away in 10 years together holding hands? What happens to this money? Well, their heirs are gonna get something, right? For 15 or 18 years. Is it good? Um, I don't know. It depends how when it happened. It depends how much the index credits were and, and the like. Here's what I tell people. If, God forbid, they pass away, this bucket didn't do them any favors. We needed them to live a long time for income. But the rest of their assets are less encumbered. What I mean by that is if they were going to live for 30 years, we had enough money that they were going to live for 30 years. We had it all planned out. If they pass away in 10 years, then all the money they did put in this bucket there's a lot more of that left over. So the 61 and 63 year old don't live that long. This hasn't been super efficient, but the other money has, there's a lot more left over. So I hope this helps your understanding. What we're trying to do is optimize income. We understand that there's a cost, there's a cost to everything. What we're trying to do is create a stream of guaranteed income to the extent that we are getting 29, 7, 11 in the first year retirement. That means we're able to push money out into the future the rest of the money, we can invest a little more aggressively because we're creating an optimal income strategy. Income, income, income. If you have any questions, put it in the comments. Send me an email. I'm happy to help. And thanks for watching.